okay? All right. Amen. Yeah. I wanna, now, this is a true story. It happened back in the 1900s. Back then, it was called a modern day. Well, I'll tell you, when you get to my age, your mind goes blank sometimes. That's all right. right. But it's called, the name of it is the apple tree. And uh, it is said to be a true story. Hey, many, many years ago, a preacher had just closed out a revival in one of our big western towns. And on his way home, he got on the train and he sat down beside a young man and tried to start the conversation about the weather. When he realized that he got no response, he turned to that young man and seen tears streaming down his eyes. And he said, son, I'm a minister. I'm a preacher. And if there's anything that I can do, I'll do everything I can to help you. And through a veil of tears, that young man told the story. He said, preacher, nearly three years ago, I got so mean at home that I struck my own dad. He called me in and said, son, you're going to have to leave. You're breaking your mama's heart. The preacher three weeks ago, as I was going by a little country church, I made my way in and God gloriously saved my soul. And now I'm on my way home. And the minister said, well, that's all well and good, son, but what makes you think that they want you to come home? And he said, preacher, all my life, I lived right beside your little old rail tracks in a little white house. And behind that white house is a little old apple tree. And I rode home and told mom and dad, that I'd be on this train. And if it's all right to come home, just hang a white rag in the top of that apple tree. But preacher, we're almost there. It's just around the curve. And I can't bear to look. The minister said, son, I'll be your eyes. And took out his handkerchief and Wipe the dust off the window of that little train. And all of a sudden, his face lit up in a great big smile. And he said, son, son, you don't have anything to worry about. Why, that apple tree, it's in full blossom. There's rags hanging from the top to the bottom. And underneath that apple tree, I see a gray-haired mom and dad. Standing there with a great big white bed sheet in between them. Saying, come on home, son. Come on home. And you know, that's the way it is with Christ. As he stands in a portal of glory. With his arms outstretched. Saying, come home, son. Come home, daughter. Won't you come home? He's calling everybody that is lost and unsaved. Back in... 95, I really needed the Lord. I lost my wife in January the 13th. A few weeks later, the contractor that I worked with lost the contract with Carolina Power and Light Company. And I was laid off. A few weeks later, my son committed suicide. Mm -hmm. But I thank God that he's there to strengthen. 
and he'll take you through any storm that you will ever face. Now, in Isaiah 61 and 3, now when the Lord was reading it, he didn't read that far. But to, out of ashes become beauty. And sometimes we wonder where the beauty's at. But the Bible even says that the beautiful are the feet to them that preach the gospel. I said that's right. So your feet are beautiful, brother. Yes, you said that. But I want to tell you about what God can do. I know some people have got a hang-up. They've got these addictions. They're addicted to nicotine and alcohol and drugs. It's a crutch. When you come to church, you don't need a crutch. Back in 1982, I'd been working with a man for a long time trying to get him. Well, he's 10 years younger than I am. Long time to get him in church. He was an alcoholic. He couldn't hold a job. He lost his family. And he finally got so bad that they was fixing to put him on disability. He would drink after shave lotion, anything that had alcohol in it. His heart had swelled to was the size of a volleyball. Two doctors had put him, was going to put him on disability and told him he walked up steps to only take one at a time and wait five minutes not to lift any over, anything over five pounds. Finally, I got him in the church. God saved his soul. He was baptized in the name of Jesus. Laid hands on and prayed for him. That week, brother, he went to the doctor and they told him they was astonished. They said, we can't believe that, that you're the same man. Go home and do anything you want to. Before I came down here, that same man put some parts on my car and wouldn't even let me know how much he paid for them. Isn't that marvelous? That's the Lord. Thank God. And and he said if I ever wanted to come back and couldn't get there, he'd come and get me. <laughs> but, but that's what God can do. If anybody's got any hang up, if you got sin or anything in your life that brother. you need to get rid of, I'm going to tell you that God's able to do it right now. You pray with me if you want to. Oh, Lord, I ask right now, oh, God, of those, Lord, that are bound by heaven, Lord, that you reach out, if they're bound by sin, let that anointing flow through every fiber of their body. Let it run through every blood vessel, every blood stream. Put them down with your anointing power and heal them completely in the name of Jesus. Save their souls. Pray, God, will give you glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 